Hello, I'm the Dark Master, and welcome to the History of the Elephants series finale! This time we'll be covering the two living genera of elephants and their extinct members. Let's start in Africa, much like the elephant lineage itself. The African elephants are members of the genus Loloxodonta, the genus name being written by Johann Friedrich Blutenbach, a German scientist. Named after its teeth, which are shaped like lozenges. For the record, lozenge in this context refers to a diamond shaped and not a throat pill. By the way, take the red pill, it's better. Back on topic, the teeth of African elephants have a diamond distinct pattern compared to the Asian elephant. This genus evolved in the Middle Pliocene with the species Loxodonta adorora. It is believed to have been ancestral to another little known species, Loxodonta exopatata. Loxodon exopatata had lower molar plate numbers and thus also lower numbers of lozenges. This species is known from eastern regions of Africa. It eventually evolved a separate species called Loxodonta atlantica. This species was larger than the modern elephant with larger dentition. It lived from the late Pliocene to the late Pleistocene and had two subspecies. The nominate northern species Loxodon atlantica atlantica and the southern species, Loxodon atlantica zulu from South Africa. The northern subspecies are believed to have evolved into the modern African bush elephant. Last of the extinct Loxodon species is the most well-known, but also the most controversial, sometimes considered a subspecies of the African bush elephant, or a full-blown separate species. The North African elephant, also called the North African forest elephant, the Cartingian elephant, or the Atlas elephant. This species, or subspecies, is controversial with it not being widely accepted by taxonomists. Though there is hope that due to its recent extinction, the status of the population could be verified through ancestral DNA sequencing if definite North African specimens can be located and examined. In appearance, it was smaller than the modern African bush elephant, but shared the larger ears and concave back of the species. It is considered to have been more docile and plain-natured than the African bush elephant. This allowed the Punix to tame as a war elephant and use them against the Romans. This leads us to the living species of African elephants, those being the African bush elephant and the African forest elephant. Ironically, these were once considered a single species, but genomic evidence proved that they split about 2.6 to 5.6 million years ago. If you don't think that's a lot, just to put in perspective, these two species are about as different from each other genetically as the mammoth and the Asian elephant, which is just super amazing if you think about it. The African bush elephant is the largest of the living elephants and is the least endangered of them, though it is still vulnerable to extinction due to poaching and loss of habitat. They live in 37 African countries and are the largest and heaviest land animals on earth. Though as discussed in the series, 
they're not really that large if you compare them to proboscideans of the past. The other living species, the African forest elephant, is also called Loxodon cyclosis. It is much more restricted than its larger relative, being primarily found in the Guinean and Congolese rainforests of West Africa. This species is believed to have interbred with the straight tusk elephant in the past, though it's still considered a distinct species. Its size is much smaller at 7.9 to 9.8 feet compared to the bush elephant, which has a size on average of 13 feet. Its skull also features distinctive characteristics, possessing tusks that point straight and downwards. Its tusks are also thinner and harder, with ivory that has a pink tint. These tusks are long and grow about 5 feet long. However, due to their unique characteristics, they are also far more poached than the other species, and their ivory is especially valuable which goes to show that humans are a very immoral creature. Its lifestyle is very similar to the bush elephant, with bulls being mostly solitary and the adult females, children, and subadults living in herds, though this isn't absolute as compared to the other species. These animals live by browsing on wild mangoes and other local fruits such as chaculia and jungle shrub. Now, let's go to the Asian continent and the genus Elephus, which was much more diverse and successful, though not so much today, unfortunately. This genus was recognized by good old Carl Linnaeus, and its name is the Latin word for ivory, Elephus, not actually the Latin word for elephant, as often believed. The story of this genus begins in the early Pliocene with Elephus ecorensis from East Africa, known from 5.3 and 3.6 million years ago. From this ancestor, there are two lineages, one that remained in Africa and one that entered Asia. The African lineage had only one species, Elephus iolensis, from the late Pleistocene from 13,000 to 10,000 years ago, and lived in the African savanna. This species withered away while the other lineage entered Asia and exploded in relative diversity. This lineage itself is split into two pairs of species clusters. One included the relatively normal Elephus planifrens and Elephus platycephalus, but it also included a very interesting side branch called the Sulanese dwarf elephant, known as Elephus celebrensis. It was quite unique as such. I will go over it in some detail compared to the other members of this species cluster. The Sulanese dwarf elephant was discovered by the Dutch scientist Dirk Albert Huygenser in 1949. It is known from Java and Sulawesi. It stood only 4.9 feet tall. More interesting is that it retained the primitive set of lower tusks in its lower jaws. This is very distinct from other elephants. It was successful, living from 2.5 million to 800,000 years ago. It was the last of the species cluster. Now, whether this trait is an additivism or simply a retention of primitive traits is not entirely known, but it is very interesting. It gives it a distinct appearance compared to other elephant species. The second species cluster emerged in the late Pliocene with elephants, High Sudriankis from the Savak Hills in the outer Himalayas. One species went on to Karabrun Islands in the Philippines and became a diminutive dwarf species, Elephus bigeri. A different species became Elephant High Sudriankis of Java. The final elephant species to evolve is the one we know and love. That is the Asian elephant. Elephus maximus, the Asian elephant, possesses the greatest biodiversity of living elephants and is closer to mammoths than the African species are. Yet it is also, unfortunately, the most endangered, the most out of all the living species. The Asian elephant has a trunk with two 
fingers and smaller tusks than the African species. Its forehead also has two hemispherical bulges, unlike the African elephants who have flat heads. But these are just general features. Each subspecies has some distinctions. This species has four living subspecies with the additional three known from the fossil record. Let's start with the extinct ones. In Java, there was the extinct subspecies Elephus maximus sondaricus, the Javan elephant. It is formerly believed to have given rise to the Borny elephants, but this is now disputed. In ancient China, the subspecies Elephant maximus Rubrensis survived until the 14th century BC. It is believed that its ivory demand drove it to extinction, as apparently had a reddish tusk. A similar fate befell the Syrian elephant, Elephus maximus asurus, which was used for war purposes in the Hellenistic period until the year 100 BC. Ironically, many people thought that this subspecies in ancient China was actually a stegodon, but this has been since disputed. The currently living subspecies consist of four subspecies. Three of these subspecies are widely recognized and are very similar appearance except for genetics and skin color. The fourth is more controversial, and we'll get to that in a bit. The Sri Lankan elephant, being the nominate subspecies, is on average the largest subspecies at between 6.6 .6 to 11.5 feet at the shoulder and have the darkest skin with clearly distinguishable patches of depigmentation on the ears, trunks, face, and belly. The Indian elephant, Elephus maximus indicus, is the middle of the road subspecies with skin that is usually lighter than the Sri Lankan subspecies and darker than the Sumatran subspecies. It is also intermediate in size and patch size. However, one magnificent individual, Raja Gaj, grew to become the biggest bull Asian elephant in modern times, being the same size as the African bull elephant, some two feet higher than the average. But again, he's an exception to the rule. The Sumatran species, the smallest and lightest skin tone of the three widely accepted species, only being 6.6 .6 or 10.5 feet tall, and 8,800 pounds. It has little depigmentation. Now, the final species is a little controversial, that being the Bornean subspecies, which some scientists consider them to be just a breed of Sumatran population, or, as I mentioned earlier, the Javan species. But, it has been discovered that they're actually distinct from the Sumatran species, Elephus maximus sumatranus. The story goes that the Raja of Java gave the Sultan of Sula a small population of elephants as a gift. However, mitochondrial DNA indicates that, in fact, this population has been separate from the others for over 18,000 years and is as such a distinct species, Elephus maximus boreensis or the Bornean pygmy elephant. Remember, pygmy here is relative, as the elephants on Borneo are nowhere near as dwarfed as the prehistoric pygmies, and it's very similar to size in Asian elephants, and they retain about 90% of the average size of the Asian elephant. So there are pygmies by technicality. And that's it. I've covered every elephant, mammoth, and paleoloxodon species and covered very nearly every other proboscidean genus in as high a level of detail as is possible with the current knowledge. Gosh darn is that impressive, no matter what my detractors say. This video series has been three months in the making, with ten videos in total. We've explored over 60 million years of history, all from the perspective of the elephants. Gosh darn. Sadly, this elephant story may not end well. All living elephant species and subspecies are endangered by poaching and habitat loss. You can help save this great dynasty by spreading awareness of the destruction of habitat and poaching, and donating to 
charities like the African Wildlife Fund and the Asian Elephant Support Group. It shall put a link in to both of these organizations in the description on this video, as well as going back and adding them to all my previous videos on this video series. I hope you all enjoyed this series as much as I have. There should be a break before I do another video series like this. I do have some individual video ideas I want to do and complete and not forget about. I also got to get some personal stuff out the way. If you like this, maybe take the journey with me and subscribe. I'm the Dark Master, and I ride into the sunset.